Hi friends, uh, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Em and this is going to be my weekly wrap up video for this first full week of February. I hope y'all had a better week than I did. <laughs> um, my oldest got this really nasty cold and was out of school a couple of days and um, I've just really been feeling the February-ness of it all this week. Just trying to remain neutral <laughs> in all things, basically. Um, and luckily there are a lot of good books to help escape from February-ness. And I have read a lot of really fun things in the past week, which really did help with my ability to cope with this part of winter. And yeah, let's just get into it. So I'm going to start off with um, the books I've already finished, and then we'll talk about what I'm currently reading. Um, I am reading and have read quite a few HarperCollins titles this week. Uh, and as of the time I'm making this video, um, Harper Collins Union has a tentative agreement with Harper Collins, but the strike isn't actually over yet. Um, I'm hoping by the time I record next week's um, weekly wrap up, they will have reached an agreement and the union will have a contract because there are some books I would really love to talk in depth about. But um, for today, I am just going to give you my star rating, I think. And um, yeah, and I think that's all I can do. I don't know. Uh, or maybe that's all I'm comfortable with doing. So anyways, um, we're going to start off with the book that I DNF'd and then get that out of the way. And then we can just talk about all the like really cool things that I <laughs> consumed this week. Uh, so I did DNF Nine Fox Gambit. This was from my stack of books that I purchased in February of last year that I now have to read or get rid of. <laughs> uh, it'll be fine. Uh, it's fine. Um, <laughs> so this is definitely a me problem, not a book problem. That has a big truck driving by my house right now. <laughs> um, when I purchased this, I did no research before I purchased it. It was an impulse buy. And I didn't realize it was a, a military sci-fi. And I don't really care for military books, um, whether it's, you know, military inspired fantasy or sci-fi or, you know, military romance, <laughs> like none of it does anything for me. Um, and so I started this, I read the first chapter, it's incredibly confused went back and read it again, this time while listening to the audiobook, and it just is not the right book for my brain in February, <laughs> basically. Um, I might try the series again in the future, but as of right now, I don't have any, like, time-sensitive intentions of trying it again. Oh. Um, and it's one of those where it's like, I know the audiobook is on Hoopla. I can always get it for this. If I want to read the physical book, I can get it from the library. I don't need to hang on to it in case I feel like reading it in the future. So um, this was a DNF and I'm going to go re-sticking this in a little free library that's by my house. And hopefully somebody who really loves a military inspired science fiction will pick it up and be absolutely delighted. All right, so the first book I finished was Strange Love by Anne Aguirre. I gushed about this a lot. Ooh, I almost hit myself in the face. I also did like a reel on Instagram reviewing this book after I had finished it. Um, I might upload that, that here too because I loved this so much. Um, I read Ice Planet Barbarians. This connects, I promise. Um, right before it was traditionally published by Berkeley. And I will be honest, I was really disappointed in it. Um, I felt like it was not creative at all. 
it relies so heavily on um, sexual assault. Um, I, I thought the aliens were really boring. Like it just lacked, um, it lacked a lot of creativity for me. Um, and it felt really predictable. Uh, but this, hi, this is what I was looking for. So Xylar's anatomy is wildly different than Beryl's. And I really loved this exploration of how do two people, like, like when your anatomy isn't compatible, compatible, like, what does that mean for having any sort of like sexual relationship? I was just, I thought it was so fascinating, so creative. I loved that because their anatomy isn't compatible, there was no breeding kink, which I find really icky. It does not work for me. So, but because their anatomy isn't compatible, there's no breeding kink because they're never going to be able to breed for procreation purposes. So all their sex is just for fun. Like, yes, that's awesome. I love it. Give me more. So big fan. I cannot wait to read more of this series. Um, I know who one of the main characters is for book two, and I'm really excited to read from that character's perspective. And this was just a good time. It was just a good time, which is really what I'm looking for. Um, so shocking to no one. I gave this five stars. So good. Uh, the next book I finished, this is a Harper Collins title. So this will be pretty brief. I also finished Pests, How Humans Create Animal Villains. It's a very shiny. Um, <laughs> by Bethany Brookshire. Uh, and I gave this four stars. And then the last thing, oh no, there's two more things. One was an ebook that I read on my Kobo. And it's the uh, Clockmaker's Daughter by C.J. Archer. And I think I gave this three stars. It was fine. Um, I don't know if I'll continue. Um, I think I would accept I am already woefully behind on so many historical mysteries that I really don't feel like I can invest in another one. Um, I will say though, like if this sounds interesting to you, don't listen to the audiobook. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. I'm going to do the premise first and then I'll, I'll say why. Um, so this is about um, India Steele, whose father has just passed away and he was a watchmaker. Um, and he, right before his death, um, in his will, left his watch making shop to India's fiance um, because uh, in order to be a watchmaker in this version of London, you have to belong to the guild and women are not permitted into the guild because of course they're not. Um, but then it turns out India's fiance is a huge asshole and he basically like breaks their engagement but keeps her father's shop and she is basically like homeless and destitute and doesn't know what to do. Um, and very early on in the book, she meets Matthew Glass, who is an American who is looking for a specific watchmaker in London. And he employs India to help him find that watchmaker since she knows the community so well. Um, and there is a mystery wrapped up in that. There's the start of a romance. Um, and there's a little bit of fantasy introduced towards the end, which is intriguing. Um, however, okay, this is why I do not listen to the audiobook is, so India is British and it's, um, written from India's point of view. However, Matt and his three friends are all American. And you know what a lot of narrators are not good at? Switching from a British accent to an American accent. And her British accent was fine. And her American accent was atrocious. <laughs> so I like listened to maybe three chapters and then I just couldn't hack it anymore. Um, so yeah, there's that. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm very opinionated about uh, audiobook narrators, I have come to realize, and I have a lot of feelings about what makes a good narrator and what makes a bad narrator. So, yeah. Okay, and then uh, the most recent book I finished is uh, volume two of Witch Hat Atelier, and I found this, it must have been because of Elliot, Elliot Brooks. I can't think of anybody else I would have seen talking about this on YouTube. So that must be who I got this from. So many big trucks today. Um, I will still say this is some of the most stunning artwork I have ever seen in a manga, like in my life. Not that I've read that much manga, but you know, for the manga that I've read, I mean, it's so gorgeous. Um, so I won't talk about book two. I will talk about book or volume one. Um, and in volume one, um, we meet Coco, who I think is about 12. Um, and she has always wanted to be a witch, but in this world, um, you have to be, she believes you have to be born with magic to be a witch. Um, and then there is a series of events and then a tragedy occurs wherein Coco learns that anybody can learn to do magic. Uh, um, Coco goes to basically what is a, ma a magic school to apprentice under um, a witch and there are three other apprentices already there and they're girls about Coco's age and then from there it's kind of a fish out of water story of Coco just trying to catch up because she's so far behind where she should be at her age um, and how she interacts with the other girls, how they welcome or don't welcome her into um, the apprenticeship. And I've heard the series end up, ends up getting pretty heavy. Um, this one had a big cliffhanger ending, so I'm um, anxiously waiting for <laughs> volume three to arrive at my library. Um, but yeah, this is uh, really delightful. Um, and really lovely storytelling, gorgeous illustrations, and I am um, really liking Coco especially is so sweet and um, so positive even when she's being confronted with uh, you know a, a situation that is really tragic. Um, her just natural buoyancy, I guess, is um, really lovely to read. Uh, and I gave this four and a half stars, ma mainly because I'm hedging my bets because I don't want to like start giving five star stars too early in the series and then read later volumes and go, oh no, this is really five stars. So four and a half stars, but really, I, I, I there is nothing I could think of that I would change in this book. Um, I think it's, it's pretty perfect the way it is. So there's that. Now, let's talk about what I'm currently reading. And sadly, three of the four are HarperCollins titles, <sighs> which hurts. So I think I'll do maybe a brief synopsis of each of them. And then hopefully when I record my weekly wrap up video next week, the strike will have reached a conclusion and then I will talk about them to my heart's content, which would be, which would be okay. lovely. Um, okay, so first off is The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. Uh, Shannon is one of my favorite authors. The David Bad trilogy is one of my favorite series of all time. So I was like, I was super excited to get an early copy of um, her next book from one of my bookseller friends. And clearly I am having a good time. <laughs> with this book. Um, but this follows Amina, who is, I think, in her 40s, and she's a mom. Um, and she used to be a pirate of pretty, uh, of pretty great renown. And she's been retired for about 10 years. She retired when her daughter was born. And she is approached in her home by a wealthy woman who wants Amina to go and find her granddaughter who has been abducted and she is willing to pay Amina a 
ludicrous amount of money to bring her granddaughter home. And so Amina decides to go back for like one more adventure to set herself and her family up to be very comfortable for the rest of their lives. Uh, is very much, I guess it's kind of like a heist story. Um, but I love that I have an older heroine. I feel a lot of kinship to Amina, <laughs> not in the pirate way, but in the like, you know, mom way. Also, Amina's knee is way messed up. My knee is way messed up. Yeah. You know. Um, so hopefully next week I'll be able to review it because I'm loving it. Ugh. I did also order pre-order this. It comes out on the 28th. Uh, okay. And then the next one I'm currently in the middle of is I'm reading Astoria by Peter Stark, which is about um, Astoria, Oregon, um, which is one of the most deadly ports in the world. Um, and so this is about the expedition John Jacob Astor launched um to he launched a, a sea voyage to try to access the port or the waterway from the pacific and also a land expedition to try to access access the waterway from i think they start in michigan like by the great lakes i've honestly i've just gotten to that the land expedition i've been reading a lot about the um the ocean expedition. Not, not super far in. Um, and it's, it is interesting. <laughs> I was telling my kids about it last night. So, uh, it is, yeah, it is very interesting. Um, I don't know if it's as interesting if you don't live in this part of the United States. Um, I know this book, I see it a lot at indie bookstores, especially, like on the Oregon coast or in Portland, my indie books are in my town. It's a staff recommendation. So I, yeah, I don't know how it hits if you live elsewhere, but for here, it's kind of fun. Um, and this was published in 2016. So I, I feel like some of the language is a little outdated. I am also listening to it on audio and I like the narrator a lot. It's the same person that does The Way of Kings. And while I DNF'd that book, I did enjoy um, the narrators on the audiobook. Uh, the, but what I do not enjoy, I feel like the subtitle for this video is Audiobook Rants. Um, <laughs> what I do not enjoy about the audiobook is that on Hoopla, there are no chapter breaks. So it's just a 10 hour audiobook with, and with no stop point, stopping points. So I, I have to read while I listen. Otherwise I would, I would never be able to find where I am in the book because there's no chapter breaks in the audio. I don't know why they thought that was a good idea, but here we are. Um, and then the last HarperCollins title I'm currently reading is uh, Fire by Kristen Kashour. This is the companion to Graceline, which I read last month and um i'm also listening to this on audio part of the time and this audiobook is also formatted in a really bizarre way i don't know what these audiobook companies were thinking when they did that but um i'm actually farther along than my bookmark has uh is because um the audiobook is formatted funky and i was it super paying attention yesterday to ch when the chapters were announced while I was listening? And so <laughs> I'm not sure what chapter I'm in, uh, but I know I'm a little bit further than this. Uh, and this, I don't know if I can say what this is about because I feel like it might be a spoiler for Graceling. So maybe I'll skip the synopsis. But I, I will say I like this main character better than I liked Katza and Graceline. However, now I am falling into, I think this book might be too long territory, but we'll see. Maybe I'll feel better or feel differently about it once I get to the end. All right. And then the final 
book I'm reading. This is a reread. This is also a very impulsive reread. It was not on my ra radar to read this book again now. Um, but the February depression spoke and I listened. And so this is what we're reading. And I also started rereading it because I was, I am on Angela at Literature Science Alliance's Discord and somebody on there shared the existence of this podcast where they recap and discuss all the Lock Tomb books. And I thought like that sounded like a really fun time. And so I am rereading Gideon for the third time. <laughs> And I'm already uh, six chapters in, and yet I don't even know if this shows up on the like video, but man, it's a good time <laughs> already. So, rereading Gideon, my love, my one and only. <laughs> Zero regrets, it's such a good time. I love the snark in this book so much. I mean, I am, Every time I reread it, I just fall in love with Gideon as soon as she opens her filthy mouth. I love it so much. And um, I listened to the first episode of the podcast this morning talking about the first six chapters. And that was also a delight. And they talked about some things like this is my notes from listening to that first episode. They talked about some things that I had never picked up in any of my rereads and add so much it's adding so much to the experience already so i love that i um they have recaps for all three books and i think i'm just gonna slowly reread all three books and listen to the podcast episode as i like get past it so yeah solid choice on my end <sighs> Yeah. All right. That's everything I'm reading um, or have read. I have no idea what is going to be up next as I finish these books. I have a possibility pile, but honestly, I've been going to the library so much and just uh, ignoring any reading plans I had set for myself and checking out a whole bunch of books. And I, so who knows, who knows what the rest of my reading will look like. For February but um, I have a lot of things I'm really excited about it's just a matter of finding the time to read them all all the, all the big trucks today okay um, I'm gonna take all the big trucks as a sign so thank you for watching my video um, if you made it all the way to the end I really appreciate um, you giving me a little bit of your time because I know how precious of a commodity that is for us and if you would like to leave a comment, I would love to hear what you were reading this week. Um, if we have read any of the same things, if we're accidentally buddy, if we're accidentally buddy reading anything. Um, and if you would like to leave a comment, but don't really have anything to say, or if you like to lurk like I do, um, why don't we leave a, a skull emoji for our bestie Gideon. And um, I will talk to you all in the next video. Okay, bye.